All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Hey. Oh, that's not bad. Do it again. How's everyone doing? Hey. I, I'm pretty crazy, but if you've seen the Bohemian Rhapsody film, you know why I was stomping and rapping badly, right? Next time I'll move with the drummer next to me, so. I'm really thrilled, thrilled to be here. Rich is going to join me up on stage. Uh, we've got a great guest in Fabrice, and uh, we have Andrew uh, coming, Davis coming up on stage. He's going to give you a demo. So the purpose of today's presentation is to give you a glimpse into version 11. And I say a glimpse, with, and I'm going to explain how we got to framing version 11 with some data and also with your help. So with that, Richard, do you want to come and join me? So first of all, I want to thank you for everything that you've done in the last year. Has it been a tremendous year, Richard? It's been a fantastic year. Yeah, yeah no, I think um, you know, we're excited about what we've done with V10 and, and uh, as Andrew noted, this is just the beginning of the journey and we're looking forward to giving you some insights into V11 and even further. And I also, we are also reminding you and thanking you by handing out some chocolates from all the way from New York, the yellow, so enjoy, happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day. So let me just set a context. Uh, so we wanted to give you, uh, Rich and I give you a quick update, quick eye chart. So a couple of things. So there's a lot that's actually shipped recently with 10.01, as you know. Um, you know, we're really, you know, uh, enthused and excited about the app dev pack and the great work that Andrew Davis did. Verse on premise 106, Domino and IBM I. Who's running I here? All right, great, fantastic. And then the community additions for the server and the client, which have been tremendous. And I've got some stats around it. So, so this is what's been delivered. Now there's a whole bunch of things which are sort of coming soon and I want to make sure that you're aware of it because there's going to be questions. Uh, we are going to re-release the Group One Languages again. And we do know we called uh, Lesson learned. Sometimes <laughs> stuff happens, right? Exactly. It's not what happens, it's how you recover from it, right? Okay. Um, there is Group One support coming for the Notes Basic and ICA clients soon as well. Okay. Uh, there's also some X pages regression fixes. Yes, it's coming, right, Richard? Exactly. And look, I think we've heard loud and clear. Many of you have asked about where we're going to go. What are we going to do around X pages? Uh, we did want to give you some incremental uh, fixes, so we're we're excited about moving that as well. And as we have here, you've seen us deliver our app dev pack on a quarterly basis. We're going to continue that momentum. So a lot of what you're seeing here and what's coming soon is actually really soon. So within the next quarter, you're going to see a lot of this start to come out. And we're going to continue that regular cadence that we've been able to achieve. Yeah, which is tremendous. Also, how many people have been asking for this one? Well, where, where's the hands? Come on. How many people have been asking for this? Okay. Yes, it's coming out. It's coming soon. Um, Barry actually showed this yesterday. I think you showed it, right, Barry? You showed the preview of the browser-based. Did anyone like that? Yes. Yeah. And then I think you also saw, uh, saw Verse on premise, and you saw the iCal import finally, right? Was that good? And then soon, before uh, probably in sort of Q2 time frame, we'll have same time limited use. We haven't forgotten about same time. Oh, not at all. That's all. Yeah, so look, I think for us, we believe that um, at HCL, that same, same time is one of the, a little golden child that we need to revisit, right? And so you see the investment that we're making with persistent chat. Um, we're also looking at what are the things we can do with same time to actually federate it. So have it very simple to what you have with um, either Teams or Watson Workspace, where you could actually put in somebody's email and actually connect to them pretty quickly and immediately. So. We are going to open up same time. You're going to see a lot more investment occur on that over the next six to 12 months. Okay, good. So I understand that the Pan Agenda sessions were well attended. Where's Florian and uh, Francis? Is Chris Oh, there he is. Okay, fantastic. 
So if you, if you haven't got the message so far, we want to, you to upgrade to version 10, right? Is that clear? Right. And, and our friends from Panagenda are really helping you do that. And with the inclusion of the Marvel Client Essentials in the Notes Client, I think that's a big step forward. Right, Richard? Yeah, exactly. So one of our goals, obviously, you hear from us on a regular basis, is simplification. So how do we make deployments easier? How do we make upgrading easier? We're fortunate to have a fantastic partner in Pan Agenda that's actually allowing us to leverage their products and make that journey much easier for our customers and partners to actually upgrade to 10. So we believe this is just one part of that journey on, around simplification, and we're going to continue to invest and partner with Pan Agenda. So we're excited about the work that they've been able to do with us, and we're looking forward to more. And there's, there's a special announcement here, right, Christoph, which basically says if you want to upgrade any of your notes clients using Marvel Client, you can do that for a limited time. And that's going to be available soon. Just <coughs> Oh, forever. Fantastic. Okay. Great. Wow. Awesome. That's it. You heard it first. All right, so what I'm going to do now is invite Fabrice to come up on stage and we're going to have a quick chit chat. And here, were you going to hug me or take my hand? Both. Do both. I'll do an answer. All right, all right. It's okay. <laughs> a right. very friendly stage. Um, so I, mu I must admit, Fabrice here from Teradyne, uh, he's another passionate person like all of you out there. And being local to office has been very beneficial. Very, very And, uh, you know, I think we've all built a great relationship with Fabrice here. So I thought it was important, you know, I was thrilled to have um, Kerry Henke up on stage at Community Day, and I wanted to have Fabrice tell his story. So Fabrice, why don't you tell us a bit about uh, Teradyne for the... Uh, yeah, so, so, so Teradyne has been in business for 55 years. We have a lot of legacy, a lot of legacy, and Notes Domino is yeah. one of those. We've built very complex applications. They're not legacy, but they're yeah, considered yeah, exactly. legacy, yeah. right? Yeah. Because and they were up until yeah. 10 and some of the announcements. So for us, we had super complex applications to support very complex systems. So we built um, all of the com components that are needed to test every piece of electronics that go into your phones. And, um, all of the old processors and all of yeah. those things were very good at testing that. They're huge machines. They require configurations that are very complex. Yeah. And all of that was built on Domino yeah. years ago. And we've been moving it forward with our new customer requirements and our new platforms. And everybody was asking, yeah. when are we going to be able to do that without the most fun on yeah. Windows? Um, and so for us moving forward you know, and mobilizing and delivering these applications to our customers and their mobile devices was an extremely large challenge. Um, so, so, so Fabrice, when you look at the names up here, yep. it's really impressive. I used to work in this industry for a while and we used to use your machines and other people's. But look at the names on this. Just think of how many of electronics and computer systems you have out there that have been touched by the systems that they built. And it came from your the creator of the company who was an MIT graduate, is that correct? Correct, it's an MIT uh, spin-off from the 60s. Yeah. Yep. So IBM's in there. Now they're a big yeah. customer. Um, where's so, the can <laughs> so Fabrice, can you sort of tell us, you know, a little bit about how you're using uh, Notes and Domino today? So yeah, so for new applications, yeah, it's great. We build them in X pages, we deploy them, <coughs> mobile, responsive, jQuery, bootstrap, all this stuff is built. Yeah, we use the Google framework to make it nice and yeah. beautiful. These, we build them in no time. It takes a few weeks and we have a beautiful web ready, mobile ready application. Um, so, who do you give these to in the enterprise? Who gets to. Everybody. Oh, this, is the, this is one of our portals that we build, it's continuous improvement portals yep. where people can come in and talk to us and other things. Okay. Yeah. And these are nice new applications. The real challenge has been taking the, the big complex ones. I, we, I mean, I heard Jacobs yesterday had 87,000 yeah. yeah. applications. Yeah. That's, you know, I thought we were. Oh, you, you had app in there, yeah. right? So, yeah. so one of the things we had is 32K was a big problem for us because we couldn't even save the forms because we had too many fields. In them. And so um, fixed back eight, that got resolved, which was really good. And that gave us a path forward to at least continue to develop. And then when uh, 10 was announced with 
what I've always wanted, dream come true, to be able to yeah, visualize say, what, what, what gets you most excited now about version 10? It's when we get to actually deploy all of these notes applications that we've had. Legacy applications, but they're not legacy heritage. applications. They're yeah. heritage. Mission critical. Mission critical continues to use every day. Every system we sell goes through those applications. To be able to give those to our board warriors and have them walk in with an iPad rather than a you know, the laptop. Yeah. And so we use replication, we use um, the security of the notes, domino no reader fields. It's, it's nothing beats it. So I have a team that does Java and they do .NET and every time, I'll do it in two weeks. I'll need a year and a half. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you do it. <laughs> and when you're tired, you let me know and we'll build a domino and deploy it and it's ready in no time. So for us, that's really been uh, a magic, uh, yeah. magic thing for us. So. So I know you're time. excited about some things. Right. Well, I'm excited about being able to roll all of that stuff out to our, our road warriors and our few people right. on, on Domino, on, uh, on the iPad. Yeah. I, I think you showed that it's coming on Android, too. But, but, well, maybe. Maybe. I'm, maybe. Not, I'm, sure. Sure. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a show. You don't you can't reveal the end. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And then, then even more good stuff is going to come, right? So those are the next slides. So that's it for me, unless there's something else. No, no, I think, look, I think we're very fortunate to have Fabrice and Teradyne be a customer that, um, that's that been leveraging our technologies for quite some time. And, and hopefully you can acknowledge that one of the things we've talked about at HCL is how do we bring our customers closer. We, I think, have done a really good job with Absolutely. you of engaging Fabrice from a, yeah. a beta perspective and giving us feedback on the work that we've been doing. We're fortunate that he's not very far from us. So, yeah. uh, He's, you know, you can probably tell he's from the Boston area. I was giving him a hard time about the hat. I was like, all right. Um, but I think, you know, for us, bringing those customers closer, hearing what is working and what is not. Yeah, the advocacy. Program. Exactly. Really, so, yeah. so we're, you know, we, we feel different. very fortunate to have a customer in Teradyne and in Fabrice that we can. So every leverage. time I go to see you guys, I'm looking at Andrew right now. I walk in and I'm like, oh. and then I walk out and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I have the answer. All right, we, we, I know where we're going. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, 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 Thanks. All right. Maybe we should get him a gym membership. <laughs> 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 so, guess what? What's going to eleven? I'm going to go All right. So, does anyone know what these things are? The Harvey balls. They're uh, sort of. Harvard Business Review way of representing a score, right? So we thought let's let's do a retrospective, right? We did we've done retrospectives thinking about the launch, the roadmap, what we did well, what we could have improved. As Rich is often fond of saying, rinse, rub, lather, and repeat. Right? right? Yeah. And and we certainly learned that through the second iteration of the jams. So just want to sort of give you some insight. I think from a pro coder. And from a mobile perspective, three quarters tip, we did a pretty good job. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. In version 10, yeah. We have a ways to go, but we'll talk a little bit about the, the momentum yeah. and the journey that we've been on here. And we'll get some excited and more what we're doing around that. A little bit more about that and around administration and deployability. I think we made some great strides in that area with Docker and CentOS and the robustness of the clusters. The fourth area is around overall product quality, right? I mean, Rich's team did an outstanding job moving through the technical debt. 10.01 had over 200 fixes from all of the beta programs, right? Correct. Yeah, and, and look, for us, um, one of the things around quality is, is we went through the transition and the progression through V10. We saw our CSAT and our debt promoter score, our MPS, actually dip down on us for a period of time. Uh, back in the, the late spring, early summer, over the last six months, we're actually now at our 52-week high on our CSAT and MPS. We're really proud of with the work that the engineering team has done with IBM to actually improve this. Uh, we obviously have some work to go here. Uh, you know, we had some challenges recently that we're going to learn from and make some adjustments on. But always trying to strive for the best products, the most quality products that we can deliver. So you've often heard me talk about, you know, I think about things, things at three levels: market, product, and technology. This, this is an area where we need to make a lot of investment, and we heard this loud and clear from you, is improve the experience for the business user. Think about the business user, right? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. So let me just sort of paint a little bit more of a picture here. So this is a product review site called G2 Crowd, right? Where these vendors are positioned is entirely driven by you, right? So it's a product review site, which means users of the product get to review. So we started this journey with the help of the marketing team back in December, December the 3rd, and guess what? Here's Domino. We repositioned it from email exclusively into low code. Just over a month later, you can see that we're making a move going up. And up means you're getting recognition for your market presence. By the way, here's Salesforce, here's OutSystems, and here's Mendex. Right? So two months from when we started, look, see where we are now. So this is feedback to the market that Domino has a presence there and is significant. And look what is pushed down. These three vendors. Who this would have is, thought? Right? Who would have thought it? This is all part of the essential work that we have to do to get recognition for the value and the ROI for the platform, and we're doing it. Now, with V11, we're going this way, right, Richard? Exactly. All exciting stuff. So how did we... How do we sort of frame that? So, you know we did a number of jams. Uh, went to some great places, met with some great teams. Uh, you see some uh, little uh, cartoons there from Japan, which are tremendous. But we really reframed the whole the way we did the jams. We moved from specifically talking about pain points to learning more about the business user, the admin, and the developer. Then we went through specifically to give Richard and his team feedback for the new guys that joined him, which is, tell us the biggest pain points that you have around using the user experience. And then lastly, we wanted to tap into your big ideas. What was the most important thing that we could deliver now? And what sort of things we should be investing in in the future? I think the great thing here, Andrew, is that um, it's another evolution, right? So we did the jams in V10. We've yeah. learned a lot. We, we made the decision to start to focus more on personas. We, we also realized, as we've already talked about numerous times, the user experience is an area that we have to focus on. So that reaffirmation was very, very productive for the development of these issues. So uh, we also did a virtual jam. We did it across uh, Asia Pacific, EMEA, and uh, also in North America. And it was very well attended. So based on about 150 uh, results here, so the persona for the business user, what you told us was user and user experience consistency was number one, integration was number two, and research, uh, reporting and uh, searching was number three. And the thing that we've been hearing from the first set of jams was you want templates. You yes. want apps. Yes. You want an app store. Yes. Yeah, we've heard a lot of here on that. We'll talk a little bit more about, about what our strategy and our plan is there. But I think for us at least, one of the things that we continue to hear from all of you and our partners is that, you know, Domino, really one of the main things about it is it's, it's a Swiss Army knife, right? You can pretty much do anything that you want. But having those templates will actually guide us a little bit better, right? So some of you might remember, um, what is it, was it the Nifty 50? Nifty 50. I think that's what it might have been called. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna revisit the Nifty 50, but we're gonna add quite a few more. So um, more to come on that, but that is gonna be an area of investment for us for V11. Yeah, absolutely. And then that last survey on there actually tells you that you were interested in basic and advanced workflow. And the second one was Kanban and project uh, task management. So, all right, so you're saying to yourself, okay, you did the jams, but you, we had the portal, the ideas portal. Well, what's, what's, what's happening with that? Well, the point is, based upon our client uh, sessions, based on the factory tours, based on the 32,000 votes, you, you gave us 32,000 votes for ideas in the ideas portal. That's pretty impressive. There were 2,300 ideas that you gave us as well. And there are 670 of you who are contributing ideas. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, that's well done, by the way. Another reaffirmation. Yeah. Great to meet you. Yeah. Oops. 
this animation should work here. I apologize. There's a nice, really funky animation running, but for some reason it's not running. Anyway, it tells you the number of jams we did and the numbers of, numbers of cups of coffee, coffee we drank and the number of um, stickies we used. But the point is, we combined this together to come up with a readout that we gave to Rich's team last week. So, so let's get into a little bit more detail. So, you know, when you go on a journey, you set a course, you define a mission, you take that particular hill. So our mission has been the same from back in February and March when we, we first showed you these slides. They were white, now they're yellow, actually. Right? You know what we delivered in version 10. And we know that some of the same themes are going to apply to version 11. But again, those are containers. They're the containers for things that we can talk about. So looking out further than that, the mission is exactly the same. So, so our mission here is really to, to give control of those digital transformation projects that you've been doing when they were called other things in the past, office automation, um, business transformation, back to the business user and the program. And we'll explain a little bit more about that. So, so let's talk about the first area. The first thing that we needed to address that we heard loud and clear was, you wanted the next generation thin notes clients. Anyone excited about that? You also wanted to add another platform for those mobile apps. You'll get to see it with Andrew Davis today. He'll do a demo. Um, and then we're going to roll into that the same time server-based roadmap into that as well. Is that and, I, and I think one thing for you to know is that when we do deliver V11, we will be merging same time into those major releases now. So you won't see same time standing out on its own anymore. We believe it needs to be broader and part of the portfolio. Yeah. Still more to flesh out in the area of uh, low um, TCO. The first area that we're making some investment is really synchronization with Active Directory. You know, if I think about the flip charts that we did from last year and the flip charts we did this year, this was like number one. How many people want this inside their enterprises? It's a very popular thing. And, and we're also going to continue with the idea of adding more APIs to make things more accessible, give the ability to build new things and do new exciting things like you saw from Lewis Gear okay, um, in the product. Because we don't just need to build it all, we just need to build the platform to yeah. enable you to do some things. And, and this one, for me yeah. at least, um, you know, we are, we're a global software company. We provide software to uh, you know, hundreds of various languages. One of the lessons learned we've had with version 10 and, and earlier was that we had been staggering our language paths. We're getting away from that. So when we actually GA the product, you will get the um, support for the uh, type 1 languages and we're working on the, the type 2 as well. Uh, so we're excited about that. It's going to reduce our, our cycle to get to you. Um, and hopefully you know, our, our key customers in Doc and Japan and China <laughs> We'll reap the benefits of this very quickly. Yeah, because I know this has caused a little bit of pain. Angst. Angst, to say the least. For me. But this makes it completely transparent, and I think that's a fantastic improvement. Thanks, Richard. So this one has a few more slides associated with it. So what can you expect? You've heard us the fact that we want to get back to low code because that's a market that this portfolio that Ray Olsey originally created uh, more than 20, nearly, uh, 30, nearly 30 years ago this year, right? So we have a birthright, don't we, to all of those applications, right? And we're doing everything to re-instantiate that again. Also, there's another piece of this puzzle, which is reimagining how domino application development will happen, right? So we're gonna show you some slides. Now, we can't show you everything, because the story is going to unfold in the factory tour, it's going to unfold in the webcast that we're going to be doing on March the 14th and going to uh, unfold later in the year. So stay with us through this, okay? Can I ask a question? Sure. Sure. Yeah. How many of you actually like the designer that you used to build? I'm shocked there's any hands that went up, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that we've actually been looking at aggressively is 
looking at how do we simplify the designer today, right? So going more canvas oriented, drop and drag. And so we believe that's an area that we can actually improve in the product very quickly. And that'll allow us to get into a true low code environment. The way the designer works today, it's really pro code, right? And so we think that having that balance in between low code and pro code is an area that'll differentiate us from our competition. And you know, having the tools is great, but as we know from the past, and we've said it before, right. you know, we need to have those samples, we need to have those templates. They're there for people to deploy immediately, but also for everyone else to be able to build new stuff. And also to engage with our business partner community as well, it's really important. So we're not saying that the App Store is coming with version 11, but it's the precursor, right? Right. To making sure that that's... And, and when we think about an App Store, we're looking at it in two ways, right? We're looking at an internal App Store, for customers and partners, so you have your own app store to manage and operate your applications, as well as an external one where we can actually put partners' applications, customers' applications, our apps as well, and allow the broader community to have access to them. And of course, we'll be reaching out to you to get some feedback on what you want that to look like. And I know certain people I'm looking over there has already got something like that in their enterprise. So if you've got something like that, you're doing it today and you want to share, Please do. Uh, reporting and searching was a big thing for um, for a lot of customers, and then we're going to continue to improve on the Node.js story, and then use that same app dev uh, infrastructure to be able to get to enable other languages as well. All right. So let me just paint a quick picture so you can sort of frame it in your mind. So the the idea here, the axis is business user to pro coder and full stack development. So if you think about it, this is the evolution that the portfolio went. There wasn't a designer in the beginning, and you used the notes client, the business users, to build applications. Today, that will be called low-code. Then, as you said, Richard, uh, we went more pro-code with the designer, right? right? Everybody else was going low-code, we decided to go pro-code. Yeah. So we've recognized that you know, this is an area that we need to make investment. Yeah, we need to make investment. And what you've seen from ACL is the innovation around extending the value of that and new platforms with uh, apps on mobile devices. And you'll see more of that today. And then the other thing that we did in version 10 was recognition that for the pro coder, Atom, a Visual Studio Code with those IDEs, the full stack, you know, with Node and React, are important things there for building certain classes of application. You saw some great demos from Luis about it. And, you know, we're, we're going to continue to invest in that area. But also, we want to go back. We have to go back and address the needs of the business user. And instead of doing it through the notes client, what's de rigueur is to do it through the browser and make sure that it works automatically on the desktop and it works on the mobile device as well. All right, so without any further ado, I'd like to bring up Andrew Davis from HDL, who's going to give you a demo. And I'm going to be the tripod, understand, right? Yep. So um, last year on stage here, we showed you uh, you know, this application sort of unmodified on the iPad. Um, we launched the beta that in June. Over a thousand of you participated in our beta. Um, we're very pleased that um, in the coming very soon, you'll be able to get access to on the business to business app store um, to be able to run those download applications. But we also talked about a journey of the other devices that are coming soon, including the iPhone and the Android. What I'm going to show you today is um, we've had a team working, and I apologize that our Pixel C here doesn't want to share directly, but here we're running on Android, the same application's unmodified. Um, here's Theo's wine tasting app. It's not showing up. Oh, sorry. Oh, you have to push the button, right? Yeah. So I'm going to give everybody a disclaimer for, for Andrew here. Just before we started, he came over to me and said, um, just want to let you know that the, the demo is more of an alpha than a beta. Uh, no, 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 don't worry about it, I have it all. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. So, um, the alpha comments made about the fact that we can't share the screen. Um, so, this is the same code, same notes client core C code we've cross compiled to the Android device. Um, but this one's much more complicated. We've been working on this for almost 12 months now. Um, we had to compile and write the whole UI layer using new technology called OpenGL to render on Android. Um, so here is wine tasting app. Um, 
So this is an app that Theo created and optimized. Um, it's just a hackathon during our factory tour. It literally released the beta. Um, and the same day, um, they had access and they got this application up and running. Um, and modified, optimized it for the device. But your standard um, discussion databases, everything works. You notice there the screen's a little slow on the redraw. That's a lot of the work we still have to do to optimize the OpenGL rendering. But the key thing here is that all of the formula language, Lotus script, all just works. Um, and that's the key that your applications are built upon. Um, all of that still works. So any of your applications work on iPad are going to work here unmodified. You, of course, can optimize the UI. Um, but I have another surprise. So this is, we've been showing you Android. Um, what I'm going to do now is take this device from Mr. Mambi. The other thing is that we actually have also have this working on Chrome OS. So we, in addition to iOS, Android, now we have the application running on Chrome OS, um, which means that since we're on Chrome OS, you can use every device down to those $300 Chromebooks to run your notes applications, deploy and manage them in the field. That's awesome. um, So, same model, write the application once, run it everywhere on all the devices. Thank you. That's great. Nice job. Thank you. So, by a quick show, a show of hands, who's interested in Chrome OS? How many people are interested in Android? Excellent. All right, so we're just wrapping up now with a couple of slides. So as I mentioned, oh. so you have one of these on your seat. Maybe you have one of these left. Please eat this. <laughs> look at this. Don't eat this and look at that. <laughs> so on March the 14th at 10 a.m., Rich and I will be uh, doing a webcast. We'll have other people like Andrew Davis and others on the phone. And our intent here is to really uh, flesh out some of the things that you heard about today with some more detail. If we're able to show you something, we will, right? Yeah, we'll have some more surprises at this point, and we'll actually be able to give you a little bit more insight into some of the other proof of concepts. But I think what we want to do here is start to drill down into another level of detail around what is in V11 and give you some sense of the timing as well. Uh, okay, next slide. So, Richard, I wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about the factory tour. Sure, thank you. So, some of you may uh, remember we did, um, HCL did a factory tour in the States in July. Uh, we followed, in, in, in true spirit of uh, trying to have some fun, we followed the Willy Wonka approach, if you guys have seen Willy Wonka at the Chocolate Factory, and we submitted out golden tickets. We are now holding another event in uh, Milan in about two weeks. Um, again, back to having fun with it, uh, you know, a little bit of a, a Star Wars theme to what's going to be happening. We'll have some um, surprise visitors, by the way, as well, for those of you who are coming. Uh, but the other thing that we really learned from the first factory tour was we'll now have a business track as well. So you're still going to have a technology deep dive with the development teams, but we're also going to have a lot more discussions around the partner programs, pricing, licensing, and the direction that we're, we're targeting. So uh, we're excited about this. We already have over 100 people who, um, who are going to be attending. And um, it's you know up and coming. And you should expect that you're going to see this on a regular cadence from us. So our goal is, is to do a factory tour in each theater every year. So this one's the European one. We'll do the US one in July again. And then we're going to be targeting one in Asia uh, in the September, October time frame. So, thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Until you see how uh, Andrew dresses up. Uh, yeah. Well, the problem is I'm too tall for an Ewok. What about C3PO? Would I look at like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I think someone's already bagged that one. Yeah. So, I don't think I can get Darth Vader. Anyway. So uh, I know this has been well when we wanted to keep it high impact. You know, next time we'll practice the uh, we'll rock you thing. But thank you very much for the for the last year. It's been such a ride for me personally. You've been tremendous, and you know we've got 
a long way to go with this portfolio, and thanks to Rich and his team for helping us do that. Yeah, it's just the beginning. Yeah. Um, one other thing, there is a connections um, session as well at, at 1230, so please try to attend that as well. Thank you. Thank you.